everyone, my name is Tiffany and welcome to my channel Foxy Sunrise. Today we're doing a reading about our unique creative expression, how we express ourselves authentically. What's the best way that we express ourselves and our energy, so creativity could just be our energy or even um, modalities in which we express that vibe or that energy that we carry so choose as many groups as you would like all the timestamps will be down below in the description box and let's get started so we have vitality and earth number 10 for group one we have two cards, three cards for group two. We've got Trick, Lizard, and Tree Frog. And then group three Game and Crayfish. And I will see you at your pile. Okay, group one, if you chose Vitality and Earth, number 10. This is your reading on your unique creative expression. Okay, one second. I forgot that I wrote down keywords for each group. Okay, so group one's keywords are old soul, ancient wisdom, wise, patience, green thumb. I also got the energy of Venus, the sign Taurus and Virgo, uh, host or hostess. So this just means that you're really good at um, hostessing people, inviting people into your home, or um, cultivating a space for people to feel comfortable and cozy. I put green thumb, cooking, soothing, relaxing, nurturing, comforting, comfort, and maternal. So these are some characteristics and uh, vibes that you may give off or th things that people have maybe told you about your energy. We also have gives the best hugs, sensual, sweet scents, Bast or Bastet, which is an Egyptian god or goddess. Uh, excuse me, she is an Egyptian goddess, not or. She's an Egyptian goddess. Um, with sweet scents, I was actually smelling and imagining my incense burning, even though I didn't have any incense burning when I was writing down these keywords. So I feel like you're very sensual in the sense of always having a candle going, loving uh, your house smelling really nice. Maybe you even always smell really good. You have like a signature scent that you have in your home or that you wear. Uh, Bastet, I said, magical interior design. So kind of with the hostess comment, it's like you're very good at cultivating a space nourishing spirit healing energy i also got the projector energy type and human design if you're into human design and strong legs or very grounded to earth and your body so i imagine somebody with strong legs and it felt like either literally having strong legs or like a representation of someone with strong legs being very grounded in their body and into the earth. I also got yoga and physical activity, but more not rigorous figures, <laughs> not rigorous physical activity, but more flowy physical activity. Um, I'm also getting Pilates too, which is a little bit more intense than yoga, but anyways. Okay, so. Yeah, that was that. That was a lot of information so far already for this group. So I split the the deck. We got Queen of Cups. So when I was um, 
writing things out for this group. Um, I was thinking of someone who is really good at saving, very down to earth, someone who, like, if you're hanging out with them, it's going to be more of a kind of chill and wine and dine sort of thing, or they may be, you may be the type of person to bring somebody in your house, invite them over, um, and just chill and watch a really good movie. Um, I had this image of, like, being with the person and like chilling with group one on the couch and just feeling like so comfortable that I would be relaxed enough to fall asleep there even if I just met you so um, and then there's something about your energy that feels like a very like safe container so people may feel just very safe around you and people may trust you very quickly as well. Um, so I can imagine this person, group one, um, hosting parties or like kickbacks. I don't know if you've ever heard of that term. A kickback is like a little more low key than a party. It's like people are just chilling. Like, I see like. Uh, snacks that you've cooked everywhere so again being a good host gardening the green thumb aspect that I got was somebody who's really good with plants and very connected to nature I also feel like this person just really loves food all kinds of food like you're not kind of you're not really attached to a specific diet, but you do have your favorite foods and maybe you're just a connoisseur for like really delicious things. Like you like a variety of flavors and you love to cook. Okay. Unique energy for group one, group one. Group one. Group one. Any creative expression for group one. Okay, this group is very just naturally creative and I feel like you're really good at finding ways of making money too. Like you don't really have a lot of money blocks or worries about how to get money. Like this group is very creative, like you can find unique ways and I feel like they come from you. Like, there's a girl I'm thinking of that I knew, and she was, uh, she could sell paintings, she could create jewelry from her paintings, um, she, she knew how to bake bread, like, so it's, like, something that's very much, like, you're the asset, and you're aware that you're the asset, so I feel like this group, if it's not, like, a high self-esteem, maybe it's something that you're not, like, like you're it's more grounded it's not like something you have to like outwardly express but I feel like this group knows that they have a lot to offer and they're able to monetize on that so just and also um you're able to cycle through things very gracefully as well um but yeah there's like this natural ability to find ways of uh, creativity and also making money which I guess like kind of goes hand in hand you need to kind of think out of the box to be able to find ways to make money which is really cool um, so I feel like business is a way that you express yourself creatively 
or you express your energy, your creative energy. And I feel like this group is also very resourceful with their money and how to invest it and use it. So I feel like you're just you're just really good with finances naturally, how to get it, how to save it, how to invest it. And I'm thinking back on the note that I wrote of um, you having a green thumb. I never thought of it as beyond having a green thumb with plants, but you may just have a green thumb in the sense like a Midas touch, like whatever you put your energy towards, you can grow and it will grow. Okay, we have Virgo energy here. So again, like very earthy. And then we have Taurus also, which is just double confirmation of this earthy energy, which is so interesting. Um, with the Virgo energy here too, kind of goes with how I said you are very good with coming up with different creative ways of making money. Virgo is ruled by Mercury and Mercury is associated with the body parts um, with um, the extremities um, as far as body parts of the human anatomy. So um, Virgo can be very crafty and creative and Taurus is also very sensual sign. So um, I feel like there's a lot of different skills that you have as far as like using your hands. So you may be very skillful with your hands, with building things. Um, I'm thinking of a Taurus man that I know and he's a mechanic so he's really good with cars um, and taking things apart and putting it back together. I'm seeing someone sculpting things, again like jewelry, painting, cooking, massage therapy even, that's very sensual activity. Um, writing. I'm getting a little less of that, but that's just another example for some of you. It's just, it just feels like more of things that are, anything with the hands for sure. That's a good way for you to express yourself creatively. Um, but again, with, with Virgo here, I feel like there's like a multitude of ideas and skills that you can really cultivate and grow. Um, Mm. Um, I'm also seeing herbs with Virgo and like a uh, pestle and mortar, like someone grinding up herbs, um, working with herbs, and that can again go back to cooking. Uh, uh, let's see. I haven't seen like someone making candles and making their own like homemade incense, especially if you have like an eye for, I can't really say an eye for scents, but like a nose for good smells and scents. <clears throat> yeah, there's this like earth fairy, earth witch vibe with this group. And just again, like resourceful, like you always have things that you can pull out of your, the tool chest of your soul. <laughs> of just things that you can offer to people. Offer and sell to people. Mm -hmm. Okay, group one. Creative, any creative expression. I'm also hearing like <clears throat> healthy concoctions and, and brews like maybe you're really good at like creating like juices, smoothies or teas. Um, okay, we have focus intention in reverse. I got one more card for group one. Soul flame. Interesting. 
Rediscover a lost part of yourself. Experience relationship harmony and healing. Focus intention. Think what you desire. Think about what you desire. Set your sides high. Expect the best outcome. I'm also getting a uh, back to the human design comment. I'm also getting like a uh, manifesting generator energy of kind of like your hand is in a lot of different pots. Um, and with the Radha soul flame energy, I just get that like you're very reliable, loyal, um, amazing. <laughs> like you, you make a really good partner. Like. You're just like that partner that people always remember for being just there. Like, you're always there. And even for some of you, like, you're still there for, like, your exes. Like, they can always rely on you. Like, you have really good friendships still with some of the people that you used to be with. Um, and you're, like, unconditionally loving and reliable. And people remember you for that. Because you're, just, you're just, like maybe one of like the best partners that they say that they've had because of just that nurturing energy homey maternal energy that you carry so love is a, a another way that you express yourself very beautifully the way that you express love when you're in a partnership Some of you, and I hesitate to say that, um, but I did get Venus energy for this group. Some of you may, like, thrive in a partnership, whether it's, like, actually, like, dating someone or marriage um, or a business partnership. Expression for group. Oh, wait, no. Okay. Also, I feel like this group. I keep getting brought back to the Virgo energy, so I don't know if some of you have like strong Virgo placements um, in your birth chart. I have a birth chart calculator underneath the timestamps if you're curious about diving into that. <coughs> Excuse me, time of birth gives you a much more specific calculation and interpretation of the birth chart so just keep that in mind but yeah there's like this ability to learn things very quickly and to learn skills very quickly and again like monetize off of them like you have a lot to offer you just have a lot to offer like it's just like I'm hearing someone say like I'm so lucky to have you like I feel like some people may may not even know how to fully appreciate what you what all you have to offer because it feels it feels kind of rare it feels kind of unique in itself that you have so much that you can give to people and again that goes back to the to the soul flame like you're just a really awesome partner to have like like an awesome friend to have, like just a good person to have on your team. And healer. Healer is another thing that comes to mind when I see Virgo and the vitality, especially because Virgo, um, Virgo energy is very health conscious. Highly intelligent, highly intelligent. Um, okay. Any other messages about one's unique creative expression group one's unique creative expression mm 
We have, and my inner compass knows the way, so very intuitive. I feel like your body is your compass. Like, a, if you haven't heard of the Claire's, um, there's, I'm sure, many beyond the five senses, but uh, clear sentence is just like intuitive senses through the body. Like, you can just feel when something's off within your body. Um, you have a very strong intuition. And then my instincts keep me adaptable in the face of any obstacle, which is in reverse, which is really interesting. Um, maybe this group is a little bit prone to overthinking at times. So there's like times where you're on, like you're on it, like you're, you're really like in the flow. And then there's other times where you might get kind of tripped up in the details. Again, we have another focus card. So for some of you, it may be really important to... Again, like I said, like not get lost in the details. We have purity at the bottom of the deck. Um, and release perfectionism. So focusing on the big picture of your desires and your goals and your ideas um, and what you're cultivating and creating versus getting lost in the details and the idea of this like purity that you're seeking. Like that'll eventually come. Um, if it exists, <laughs> um, but I feel like that comes over time, over trial and error, and um, that you have like a pretty solid intuition and compass, like uh, I mentioned earlier. So you should trust that more than maybe the inner critic in your mind that's telling you like all these other things need to be fixed before you can move forward in any capacity because that's not true it's just like remaining focused her eyes are closed she's focused on something within that is more pure than the overthinking egoic um, destructive egoic inner critic um, that can be kind of tending to perfectionism which I feel like this group may have like a little bit of a, uh, of a struggle with with that with things looking a particular way and having to be a particular way. But um, yeah, this group has so much to offer. I feel like when you relax a little bit and you kind of let things be as they are, like in that down to earth way, um, it's even more beautiful. And people can really, can really enjoy all of those other things that I mentioned about you, which is just being nurturing, being uh, a sacred space, um, just like a walking uh, sacred space or womb for people, you know. Um, so yeah, just, just uh, find ways to remain in that like relaxed state so that you're not overthinking too much and, and you can have more moments where you are in the flow instead of like kind of fluctuating back and forth. And those are, I mean, it's normal, but if, if it can be controlled or improved, <laughs> Um, definitely do that and if you're aware of it if it's happening more times than not that you feel blocked in your instincts than you are on um, then you are trusting your inner compass um, definitely look into that but yeah this group is like very bountiful okay group one that is your reading let me know what you think in the comment section down below like, share, and subscribe for more, and I hope to see you again soon. Hey, group two. Welcome to your reading. So we have Trick, Tree Frog, and uh, uh, Tuatara, the lizard. Okay. Um, so I have some keywords for y'all. We have shapeshifter, dynamic, adaptable, earth and water elements. So these might be elements that you resonate with or that ground you or you gravitate towards. Um, I got, <laughs> when I finally finished writing down all the uh, astrological energy that I felt, um, I was like, well, I'm, I've almost written down all of them. So, <laughs> um, 
but I wrote Gemini energy, Aquarius, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Aries, and Capricorn, and I got uh, Mars in Scorpio, Aries, or Capricorn, and Mercury in Scorpio, Aries, or Capricorn. Um, but when I was reflecting back on the shapeshifter adaptability piece that I mentioned, it's kind of like I wrote down so many zodiac signs. I feel like you guys can kind of like really blend and and, sh and shift into whatever energy is necessary at that time, like very naturally. So, um, yeah, I also have a link underneath the description box. I mean, <laughs> not underneath. I have a. <laughs> Um, I have a link underneath the timestamps in the description box um, for a birth chart calculator if you're curious about that and the time of birth is super important if you want something, uh, if you want a descriptive delineation of that birth chart. And it has like little burbs if, you, if you're new to that realm of things. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I also wrote Vision, Insight, and Night Owl. So, someone who has a lot of energy during the night, or maybe a little bit of an insomniac, you might have like a very buzzing energy. That's kind of the energy I felt when I was um, writing down notes for this group and keywords. Um, it was like a very like it's, the energy had like a hum to it. I also wrote Old Soul, Instinctive, Sturdy, Survivor, Trailblazer, and Independent. So I imagine somebody in this group who was very used to riding solo and just like being alone and you're very comfortable being alone. Um, and the keywords on here are dreaming, sight, knowledge, hidden gifts soul song meditation creation and rebirth i got like this like native american or just like uh south central american shamanic energy from it too from these creatures which is really interesting um i don't really have much else to say on that but i wanted to throw that out there too um But I feel like this group, because I spend so much time alone, they have a lot of like very unique um, ideas and a unique creative expression, which is what we're talking about today. So. And as far as trick, I was getting like strong Gemini um, trickster fool energy from this, and again, like that kind of points back to the shapeshifter comment that I made earlier <coughs> and um hold on let me get some water um I feel like n no one knows you like you know you and even when people think they got a handle on you you've completely shifted and changed Like, no one can put you in a box. And, um, <clears throat> you love that. I feel like you just love messing with people in that way. It's like, oh, you think you know me? Okay. I love it. Okay, information on a group of twos. You need creative energy. Information on group twos. You need creative energy. Um, with the star card in reverse, I feel like some of you may have watched, um, my last reading, which was on, um, hidden gifts, 
because we have hidden gifts here. I feel like y'all may have chosen group three. Um, maybe you've had a past of being kind of either combative about your individuality or people just were triggered by how unique you were. And so some of you may be hiding that aspect of you or trying to rediscover that aspect of you, which again, like kind of points back to the shape-shifting aspect that I mentioned. I feel like shape-shifting can be a skill that someone has and maybe it can start out as an ability to really protect yourself and defend yourself. You have King of Cups here. Um, there's like a high emotional intelligence with this group too. So I really want to emphasize, I feel like this group may have use their shape-shifting abilities as a sort of like <laughs> I'm, I'm being pointed back to trick so i i really feel like this group may have needed to be aware of their environment um and to protect themselves one they developed a like keen sense to be very attuned to their environment which has created a very emotionally adept and intelligent person and also someone who is very protective of themselves as well and who they are maybe um we have five pinnacles at the bottom of the deck there may be some mindset around um people don't really value you and who you actually are which is why you're so protective of who you are so the trickster energy and like bending your authenticity and your words and your expression is like a way that you can uh, keep people from really seeing who you are and rejecting you because there's something like very unique um, and also powerful about this group like I feel this like stick it to the man sort of energy of like um like you don't care what people think, but you're also very protective of um, yourself, your sense of expression. I'm getting like someone who doesn't like share their ideas, partially because they just don't want them tainted with like the opinions of others, and they don't want to hear like others' feedback either. So it's like this sense of control. Like I'm not sharing myself with you because I don't care what you have to say about it, and it's for me to know. And for you to see after I've finished and materialize this idea as an example. Um, but <laughs> interesting, interesting. We have the star in reverse and the strength upright. Yeah, so uh, with the strength upright, yeah, there's Pisces reverse the shape shifting Jupiter and Pisces um, yeah I feel like this group has become very knowledgeable and really an expert at kind of being whatever is necessary for the environment and for the time and uh, for the person but what I was saying with the strength card and the star reverse there's like a subtlety, a subtleness of, again, like, adapting to your environment, and there's a strength in that, but it's weakened your ability to fully externalize and express your unique authenticity. Um, like, you don't, like, I feel like, it's not all of you, but for some of you, you don't want to, like, offend other people with your beliefs even though you feel so strongly about them. And you're very knowledgeable as well, like very highly intelligent group. Like you definitely have different thoughts and views. That I, I, I just feel like there's something very triggering about you that you need to embrace, like about the way that you think and your opinions. And to be confident in that and stand strong in that, you don't have to flaunt it exactly and kind of like yell it at, on the rooftops, but like own it. 
I keep talking about like expression, so I feel I feel that this group's unique creative expression is word embodiment, which is really interesting. Um, but it's like your way of expression is by doing and being by action. Um, like the, the things that you wear, the way that you move, the calculated steps that you take, um, also with Jupiter and Pisces, um, maybe there's a tendency to escape in solitude or in your own world away from people and it could point back to you just being very protective of your energy so you indulge um, in things alone could be like getting lost in documentaries by yourself or just spiritual content and books or even substances um, call to action group two group two group two too. But uh, the stupid energy is very much somebody who has an expansive mind, who is curious about the world, um, and a very independent and loves to be sort of transient and move around and see new things and be exposed to new things. So again, it's like your way of expressing yourself is just through your action and your embodiment. And then we have higher learning that comes out with which oh my gosh then we have ancestor spirit at the bottom of the deck i was mentioning the sort of native american shamanic energy here there's like okay i'm trying to slow myself down with my words um yeah so there's a way of you being a mentor a leader with a lot of wisdom um spiritual wisdom intellectual wisdom very out-of-the-box thinking very unique thinking a uh, quick learner um, some of you may resonate with star seeds which is interesting because I mentioned that shamanic earthy sort of energy but there's also like this like I feel like uh, your crown and your third eye and Ajna chakras may be like very active So you get a lot of like wild insights, epiphanies, and ideas and downloads. Um, Commander Ashtar, call to action, take charge, lead by example, walk your talk. Walk your talk. <laughs> I'm getting the Migo song, walk it like a talk it. So it's like, again, like there's this way that you just, you are an embodiment of creative expression. Like there's nothing that you actually... It is like through you doing, but it's more of just like the way that you are, like your being is just so charged with, it's, it's inspiring. Like the way that you move is inspiring. That is like how you inspire people. That's how you express yourself creatively. It's just by what you do, what you're guided to do instinctively. <laughs> it's so primal and yet you have the mind of someone that isn't from this world so it's like such an interesting beautiful balance and i'm being drawn to the king of cups the cups is like emotion so it seems like the realm that is feminine but then we have it being portrayed in a masculine form so that's kind of what i'm seeing here with like this combination of like earthiness with um the ethers with space and like earth being feminine and like space and the ether and air energy being masculine so having like this high high intelligence this natural intelligence and also like grounded rooted earthly ancient wisdom i feel like this group is probably attracted to ancient civilizations um ancient medicine maybe even like traveling to places to dive into plant medicine um even if it's like not hallucinogenic maybe even just like cacao or earthly things like you may be the type of person who gets wisdom from plants like there's a guy that i know um he was <laughs> 
he's very sensitive, uh, but he was tripping and he said during his trip, like he came across this tree and like he was just stuck to the tree and he felt like he had this relationship with the tree and the tree was communicating with him and sharing energy with him. So I feel like this group may be able to get information and insights from different areas of the land. I don't know if you've got, if you, this group has like been drawn to um, portals or vortexes that they talk about in some of the spiritual community from like different like remarkable land sites all over the world. I think they're called like chakra points of the world. I don't know. Um, but that might be something to look into, but this group is like, like head in the, in the, in, in the ethers and like, but your feet are still in, in, in the core, like in the, in the, in the clay and the dirt of the, the soil of the earth tripping over my words a little bit because I'm trying to express like what I'm seeing in my mind. It, it just all sounds kind of crazy. <laughs> um, and then Melchizedek, you have learned from experience. More inner study is now required for further progress. So I'm seeing someone who's on this pilgrimage or again with the Jupiter energy that I mentioned. Um, you may have Sagittarius moon or like Pisces sun in the ninth uh, sun in the ninth house um, you may have like a very strong ninth house like a stellium in the ninth house um, Pisces energy um, Jupiter and Pisces Jupiter and Sag maybe Sagittarius in the 12th Jupiter in the 12th um, I don't know why I'm getting Virgo in the 12th too um, Anyways, so with the Jupiter energy and then the further higher like learning card <laughs> and the call to action, I feel like a lot of you may consistently be called to different places to go travel and move because there's like information that you can receive from the location that you're being called to, from the people in that area that you're being called to. Like there's something to learn, maybe you're a keen on um, past life so maybe even you're being called to sites where you will have this like kind of like awakening to old information from a past life or another time I always feel so weird talking this way but the more I do these readings the more it kind of comes out so um, yeah that's just the message that that wants to be shared but um, I really vibe I always vibe with every group, but this group I actually would love to hang out with. Um, Y'all sound like super fascinating and cool and just interesting. Although I feel like you're very independent and kind of hard to keep up with. <laughs> like you may have issues keeping up with texts. You're not like a person who really likes technology. So like you kind of float off and people kind of have a hard time like keeping in contact with you because you're always like experiencing life even if it's like from the comfort of your own home you may be like diving into a documentary or a book or podcasts or just like you're always like stimulating your mind like i'm seeing a lot of energy around the head in these photos a lot of energy around the head um so i feel like you're always uh being stimulated in that way and um I don't know like there's something very fun and exciting like there's just like anticipatory energy with this group that I'm getting um <laughs> I feel like um you're like this unattainable thing for a lot of people I don't know why this is such a random comment but I feel like your energy like you have this way of like sweeping people off of their feet but because you are sort of unattached and you're you're more attached to like this ancient knowledge and like growing yourself and self-development and like your own like intellectual curiosities that you're not necessarily worried about 
love per se, but I feel like you have a lot of people who are so intrigued by you and refreshed by your energy. So I feel like you have a lot of suitors very naturally and people attached to you. Because you're so, like, you have so much, so much within you and so much to you. I feel like it's like, how could you not be attracted to this person? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. This, this group feels like they have a lot of just, you have the potential of having a lot of lovers. Or you just have, like, people who really just <laughs> want to get with you. They want to, like, be that person that settles you down and that person that like knows you the most because it's just like you're sort of mysterious in the sense of like no one can really pin you down long enough to really get to know you because your eye your focus is really on this vision that you have of really just learning all that you can know and using that integrating that so that you can really grow and expand as a person okay group Two, your unique creative expression. Group two is unique creative expression. Group two is unique creative expression. I honor the natural process of growth and transformation. That's so cool. That is so cool. I surrender to the power, the blah, 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 blah. I surrender to the power of prayer and devotion. Devotion is like the main word that comes, that like sticks out to me in bold letters. Devotion. You are very devoted to your goal, to your cause. And that can be like attractive in and of itself, you know? And so I think that's another thing too is like, you're not like other people. I'm getting a stronger masculine energy than I am feminine energy. But again, like I was saying, like there's like a really nice balance with this group. Um, ooh, I'm getting <laughs> Uranus in the first house, Aquarius rising. So you may have Aquarius rising or an air. Mm, I, I take that back. I just really strongly feel like Aquarius rising or Uranus in the first house. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, there's something that, like, something about you that, like, when you find something that calls to you, you are so devoted to it. And I feel like that's kind of rare. Um, but, okay, I remember what I was going to say. There's, like, something very attractive about how unique you are because whatever society or basic people are usually drawn to like for example this is the best example that I have because that's what I was thinking about so say like women heterosexual women think I'm talking heterosexually um but heterosexual women um notice that guys heterosexual men um at least portrayed what's portrayed that heterosexual men are just lusting after women all the time they're unfaithful they're distracted they don't really have any goals because all they can think about is like their next uh sexual conquer and things like that but i'm getting from group two that you aren't like that at all like your focus is beyond like those lower chakra desires like yes you are a sexual person like it's not like you're asexual per se and maybe some of you are but it's like because you're you actually have a drive and a focus like i feel like that makes you such a magnet for um love opportunities and it, it puts you a distance away from like the norm and from other people like you stand out amongst like a crowd because of the things that you're interested in and the things that you care about and the things that you are driven by um like people can just tell that you are different you are in a sense like awake like you have grown beyond like the desires the lust the like things that are even pushed in um uh propagated is it propagated i'm talking about propaganda like the propaganda of society the things that are like repetitive repetitive and songs and music like you aren't even faced by that you like have like these like 
very expansive highly intellectual goals and curiosities and people are just like <laughs> just I'm just seeing people drooling just like wow you're so like <laughs> you're so interesting you're so unique and <laughs> blah 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 I just okay so we have balance these are your last cards I can tell this group is kind of like airy and intellectual cuz always talk the most with these groups like I always notice that um okay we have balance we have growth and assessing I definitely feel like this group is just so cool like <laughs> I feel like one of your fangirls. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Like, you have a lot of fan beings, fan people who are just like, just like, wow, like, I want to hear more about your interesting life and your interesting mind. And you're so what? Like, <laughs> they just, <laughs> I'm going to pull back from that because it's so distracting. <laughs> Anyways, um, growth and assessing in reverse. We have someone who is very introspective and always just looking for the next thing, looking for the next thing that will expand you, the next thing that will um, give you what you're looking for, for lack of a better word. And I think I can't find like the right word because it's not like you're looking for anything in particular. It's just like, you're just looking. You're just like, that's how your curiosity works. Like you're just opening, I don't know why opening every egg. You're like lifting every rock and seeing what's underneath it because you just, you just like that's what drives you like it it drives you to be that type of person and I'm even driven like just sitting in your energy um there's so much to be said there's so much to to see and discover um so there's like this constant inward and outward which is what I'm seeing with balance um and what I mentioned earlier with the king of cups and the um high cosmic intelligence with the earthy like shamanic energy um the ancestor spirit which i didn't read connect to your lineage a family wound or pattern can be healed now wow wow you may be oh my gosh there's so much this is gonna be a long a longer um anyways with the ancestor spirit i feel like some of you who know what you're looking for, what you're looking for is like a way to break these chains. Like with that old soul energy, you're very aware of how you stand out compared to the lineage of your of your family and how maybe you feel like the person who's here to break the chains, I'm here to create a family but a family that's different from the family that you've grown up in and that your parents have grown up in, et cetera, et cetera. So some of you are really innately aware of that and you really believe in that. And that's what your, your growth is really pointed towards. You're like, I'm building for my family, the future of my family, um, the future of my child and the intelligence that I want to instill in them. So I need to figure myself out before I bring somebody into this world and plant beautiful seeds into them so that I have a gorgeous lineage. Um, and also, even if your lineage is just the people that you inspire, the kids that you inspire, you might not have like blood family if that's not anything that you're interested in. Or it could be both. It could be both at the same time. You could be planting beautiful seeds um, <laughs> and those seeds could be your children and your children's like mind and who they are and also the children of the world <laughs> or of your state community whatever um but like oh my gosh there's i can just talk and talk and talk about this group but there's just there's so much there's so much um it's just like this constant <laughs> maybe that's how you feel you feel like there's just so much when you open up one door 
there's there's another door and there's another door so that's what this group feels like there's so there's so much and there's this buzzing energy of excitement of like oh my gosh i wonder what the next door leads and the next door and the next door um okay so i need to unplug before uh this becomes a uh, reading all about group two <laughs> um even though y'all are a really cool energy so yes group two that is so this is just so exciting like so exciting um let me know what came up for you what stuck out for you um in the comment section down below like share and subscribe for more readings like this one and thank you for stopping by um because i'm sure you guys are very busy uh so if you're here right now that's super awesome um <laughs> anyways uh, yeah say hi let me know what's going on in your life. Um, yeah, anyways, later. Hello, 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 hello. Group three. <laughs> we have Game and Crayfish, number eight. So I have some key words for y'all. Group three. Cancer energy. Impulsive. I saw a brown bear. Um, as well, so I don't know if you want to look into the um, spirit animal symbolism of a brown bear or the um, just dive into the symbolism behind a brown bear. Resourcefulness, always moving through phases and, integ and integrating. I also heard like this group always got something going on, like there's always something going on with you. Um, sensitive, receptive, adaptive to environment. Reads the environment very well. Protective, defensive. I also got this younger energy, this coming of age energy, and this energy of finding yourself. And there's a quote that I will, I'll read at the end. I'm like, am I gonna remember to read it at the end? I will, I will remember to read it. Um, but um, with this game, card and the keywords that I got. I feel like this group's been playing around a lot. And I, um, this group had a heavier energy, to be honest, and there was, like, a lot of tough love that I was getting. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't like being that kind of messenger, but, um, it is what it is. Yeah, it feels like this group has been playing around a lot. And, um, when I got the phrase, like, this group always has something going on, I feel like there's, like, you you take a couple steps forward, and then you kind of revert back to your old ways. So, I don't know if you guys are younger, or maybe you're younger in the sense of, like, this journey, um, spiritual journey, maybe you have a young soul, or you are actually younger, or you are just, like, kind of, like, in the crawling, learning how to walk phase of like a spiritual journey and of like discovering yourself and of self-awareness and self-inquiry. So there's that, but it's like this like playing too much, like you're playing too much. <laughs> um, which is fine, you know, like there's lessons in that, um, but there's also this I'm remembering some of the things that I read about the crayfish. There's something like very um, interesting with the crayfish. It eats its own shell when it molts. Um, so with that, I was getting like you integrate the th the skin that you shed. So maybe there's something that happens where you aren't digesting these old skins very well. So you're not like what I mean in that comparison, in that uh, metaphor, that analogy, is like you think you learned and then you go back and you make the same mistake. So there's this kind of cyclical image that I get from the game too with it being this this like dartboard, this, this circle, the shape of a circle. So um, like playing too much with like these cycles and not fully digesting what you should have learned from your last like few lessons so um
there's something very sustainable about the crayfish eating its own shell and there's something that isn't that's like super cool and non wasteful about it so there's a um, something to be emphasized with that too it's like are you wasting time by shedding and then not learning from what you shed and then having to like be wasteful with your energy with your time and wasting time and playing around like I said like and with the number eight too um, I'm being led to the karmic cycle with number eight um, and being stuck in the past at times as well so this can keep you from understanding how you create uh, how you express yourself creatively when you're just like playing around and you're stuck in these cycles and you're constantly in this process of shedding and escapism and constantly indulging in just destructive distractions so let's see let's see But I feel like if you're here, you know, that's that's a good enough sign. <laughs> that's a good enough sign, group three. Um, and some of you may know, it's just like, again, the integration is like, okay, now that you know that you keep repeating these patterns, what are you going to do about it? And you don't just do something about it once. You have to consistently do that thing, you know? Um, and are you ready? Are you ready to do that? Because it's a, it's a, there's a maturation and deciding like, I'm not going to fuck around anymore, you know? And that's like points back to the younger energy that I was getting. Like, are you ready to do that? Is this how you want to express yourself in this sort of like impulsive, sporadic, chaotic way? Which is beautiful, you know? Have, have, has anyone ever heard of a beautiful train wreck? That's a thing, you know? That's a, that's an expression of your energy. Let's see. Emperor in reverse. Okay. Group two's creative, unique creative expression. Group two's unique creative expression. Group two's unique creative expression. Group two's unique creative expression. There's like a, okay. There's a way, especially with Cancerian energy, that you can direct your energy. <laughs> I hate repeating the same word over and over, but it's like, because you're not directing it responsibly, um, there's something very martyry about water energy as well, where like things are just happening to you instead of you being the cause, um, other things in your life become the cause and then you just feel the effects of it. So instead of you being the cause and effect, you because you are just kind of like chaotic um, and allowing like your environment to be the operant power versus you being the power, one, you're wasting your energy. There's like it's just this like scattering of energy. There's this like not really being aware of your choices or not making any decision at all, which again is like coming from this disempowering place. You just let your environment choose for you. You're not directing your energy, which is just wasteful. It's not sustainable. Humans should be sustainable too. Yeah, you have a way of, like, a potential of being very uh, dominant, very much leader, um, but it's, like, choosing to be reckless, choosing to be manipulative, be and knowing that you may be powerful and being manipulative in that way, and maybe being manipulative in a, a more... S s um, I'm, I'm getting the book, The Art of Seduction, so being s manipulative in a 
a subtle subliminal way that's the word that I'm looking for um, so just mm, mm. lying dishonesty like not really being kind of fake and phony it's just not a good use of energy oh I hate this I hate this <laughs> I hate this Okay, we have double energy, moon energy, and knight of cups energy. So there's like sort of a need to develop. Um, one, develop intellectually. Uh, through like a sense of self-awareness. There's an addiction here, like kind of the escapism that I was mentioning. There's like this like attachment to just kind of playing in the dark with people like or just playing in the in your darkness in general like you're comfortable in your darkness which can be positive but this doesn't I mean with with the way this is going this is not positive at all um, this is just kinda like toxic just just playing in your toxicity um, the moon energy and the knight of cups energy there's <sighs> I feel like there's this fluctuation of being aware and then being unaware. Being aware and being un being unaware. And there's a need to be more tactful and uh, I'm trying to think of another word, but I'm going to repeat myself again. Being aware and tactful when it comes to the motives and where they come from in your subconscious and why you do for why you do what you do it's almost like you know that and you're and you're still operating in this toxic way which is just so i i i <laughs> i don't know if you had some sort of relationship with authority a parent or a lover that brought this out of you and you feel like this is how you have to act but there's like a, a lack of emotional intelligence as well um so maybe you're imp you're empathetic but you use it to your advantage you're kind of manipulative with it like you're still kind of a baby when it comes to your emotions how to express them how to handle them and how to channel them and use them uh, i uh, this is this is And it could even be just like, this is coming out of you because of the toxicity that you allow around you. And so you just think this is normal. You think this is okay. Because the people around you are like that. The people that you've been around, the people that you've been raised around, you know. And this could stem, um, the moon card is also making you think of childhood. And... Um, I don't know it's like a like a it could be either or kind of split it's like you are aware but not aware enough to actually know like where this comes from to fix it um and like the repercussions of this and how it's damaging you like maybe you get a benefit initially but it's it's <laughs> it's like an imbalance that you continue to entertain in the long run and it really hinders you and it like degenerates you like it like it devolves you staying in this energy and using your energy in this way uh, but then at the same time like you're just empowered you're not as powerful as you think because you're a slave to all of these other vices and also the way that people act um, because you're acting like them or like what, what you've been exposed to. Okay, group three. Creative expression for group three. 
Any creative expression for group three. This is giving me like Machiavelli, like, like you have such a like power of like pulling strings, but it can really be used in a very damaging way. We've got Libra in reverse. Okay, any other any other information? Group three is unique creative energy. Group three is unique creative energy. Jupiter again, so it's just like <clears throat> You very knowledgeable, very good leader, very good um, manipulator. <laughs> I just have to say it. Like you're very good at manipulating other people and their energy and influencing people. Um, and it's just like understanding how you get power and if it's coming from a productive or a destructive like way. And uh, maybe, again, like some of you may not even be aware that you um, yield your power in certain toxic ways. But it's like, it's coming off a little bit like, um, just like you aren't really considering other people. Of course, like, it's just, like, self... <sighs> selfish. I'm trying to think of the word that I'm thinking. Uh, I can't think of the word that I'm trying to say. But it's just, like, it's really just, like, almost like climbing the corporate ladder and not really worried about, like, other people. You're just, like, very... So zeroed in on your goal and benefiting yourself that you kind of just step over people at times there's like a need for control really that's like the biggest theme with this group is like control like because you have to like your control issues have the ultimate power over you even though you think you have all the power it's like i trust the mystery of life in reverse Like, there's, like, a very obvious, like, apparent uh, sh strength and ability in, like, your, in what you're doing, but if you just need to feel safe or you need to, you know, I'm thinking of somebody who, like, uses sex to manipulate people because you want to be loved and you don't want this person to reject you or leave you, so you do that. But again, like, that is not healthy. When I let others shine, I shine too. Okay, so there's like... This feels like very possessive. Like, now is the time to integrate all that I have gathered. That is so funny. There's like this strong, like... I'm getting kind of a toxic, like, wounded Scorpio moon energy. Um, or moon in the eighth. Or Mercury in the eighth. Or Mars in the eighth, or Mars in Scorpio, like a like a tainted, like toxic Mars in Scorpio, um, or Cancer, because I said Cancer energy. But there's like this like a awareness of how to. <sighs> okay, so I put here in the notes, in the keywords, reads environment well. So because you have that ability to do that and to read people very well. You have a higher ability <laughs> and gift to manipulate your environment. And even if it's coming from just a need for safety, a need to secure, to, to feel more secure, excuse me, it's, it's still really important to, to understand where those motivations come from. Or else they'll start to run you, and then you're just hurting people. Um, yeah, so when I let others shine, I shine too, and now is the time to integrate all that I have learned. There's, like, some, like, 
<sighs> some jealousy here. Um, like a scarcity mindset here. Maybe some envy that you have with people, which can cultivate somebody who's not very cooperative. Like you're just like, it's mine. It's mine. It's almost like a, like in a lighthearted way, like a only child syndrome. Like you don't like to share. You don't like to let any anyone else have the mic. And it's like, why? Why is that? You're not evil, you know? I'm not trying to make you out to be this bad person, but it's like, okay, where is this coming from? What is, what's going on? Why do you act this way? Because it could be just like, again, like your inner child, like childhood, is usually the source of a lot of things. So maybe it could be as simple as somebody just did not pay enough attention to you. And you had to, as a child, like, manipulate things or cause trouble. Like, create fires, almost, just so that you can get somebody's attention. Or you had to, you know, use your body to get attention from other people. Um, and it's like, you have all this power, but it's like, there's a lot to be shed so that this power isn't, like, dark. All dark. Or toxic. And that you aren't attracting toxic people around you either who, who may take advantage of the power that you have and like encourage you to continue behaving in this way or ha like planting bad seeds so you continue like having these bad habits, you know? So that's just something to think about. Creative expression, unique creative expression of group three. Unique creative expression of group three. Care and compassion. That's sweet. Unique creative expression group three. Okay. Forgiveness. Jesus. All right. Yes. Who has hurt you, group three? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be... <sighs> Um, so we have care and compassion, Kuan Yin. Choose to be loved. Do what is right for everyone involved. Offer a helping hand. Okay. Because there's enough for everybody, dude. I know that's easier said to be done. Then That's easier said than done. Because even when I said that, I was like, I could hear somebody being like, oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's a battlefield out here. Like, <laughs> um... Yeah, there's a strong competitive energy, like, uh, almost, I mean, kind of, kind of, kind of frightening. Your third eye is open. See truth for what it is. Follow your intuition in reverse. So I feel like there's something skewed with your perspective. Um, with the psychic insight in reverse, there's like, the way that you're viewing things is, is a little bit filtered. And then we have Master Jesus, forgiveness. You are on the path of light, love, and forgiveness. Father healing is possible at this time. Yeah, so um, I was getting strong, like, daddy issues or energy from the devil card upright and the emperor card in reverse. So maybe you've learned from a father figure or, again, like, a person of authority. Um what masculinity is and what power is and maybe they didn't really know a healthy way of expressing it and so you thought like this is just how you get things you take unapologetically you don't share you know like it see it feels like there's like an imbalance in the masculine and feminine energies like there's a lot more like brute <laughs> war ish masculine energy i'm getting um mars and aries placement did i mention the uh, i don't know if i mentioned the um the link underneath the timestamps in the description box if you're curious about your birth chart check it out time of birth gives you more specifics so just keep that in mind but uh yeah i'm just throwing out placements that i feel um and it can't even just be an archetype, like a way, something that you embody. You could have Mars in the first house. 
um, or Mars and Aries. But there's like this like very Martian, very like all or nothing like Scorpio, Aries energy. Um, <clears throat> You could have um, Aries South Node or Aries Saturn and Aries. Okay. All right. Let's see. Group three. Advice for group three on their unique creative expression. Advice for group three on their unique creative expression. Advice for group three. Acceptance. Advice for group three. There's some stubbornness here, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Advice for group three. Protection. Mm, okay, that's why. Yeah, you're so you're so protective of yourself. You're so hard on yourself. Um it's like there's healthy competition and then there's like, okay, if I don't do this, I will be rejected. I won't get what I need. There's only, like, I can't have anyone take something from me because I've lost so much. Like, there's something very intense about this group. Um, and there's a need for some softness. We have self-love in reverse at the bottom of the deck. And we also have power in reverse at the bottom of the deck. And self-reflection at the bottom of the deck. I will stop there. <laughs> um, but, dude, like... There's no reason to throw out all of these beautiful ways that you express yourself, your gifts. It's just like honing in on how you are doing that. Are you abusing the power that you have from how you've adapted? You know, like you've adapted and you've gained this power, but how are you using it now? Are you still using it like the little girl who couldn't get her daddy's attention because he was at work or because, you know, or... Whatever the story, whatever the story is, um, I'm just naming an example. Um, but like, understanding the ways that we protect ourselves, how we have a shell around us, understanding that you have such a like powerful energy that you will attract what you need, whatever you want, you can do that. Like, there's like. A very strong ability to do that and you don't have to use this old way of, of forcing of like pushing yourself and um, like focusing your energy is important here too um, uh, I'm being brought back to what I said earlier about this energy being a little chaotic um, I want to, I'm also feeling the need to say that there's a need to soften a little bit. Um, not to the point of like losing yourself and not being who you are anymore, but soften knowing that you are your own safety. You can always feel safe. Um, to forgive what has happened and what has brought you to this point of just, uh, just, just, feeling like you need to compete and there's not enough you know um because i mean this energy is more than enough and <laughs> the energy that you carry is more than enough it's just being expressed in a um toxic way yeah just playing games with people people may have played games with you like there's a little bit of shape-shifting energy here, too, of just, like, the, the manipulation, the manipulation aspect. Um, and then, again, like, not seeing things as clearly, like, for what they are, but seeing them from the point of view of, like, what happened in the past, like, what traumatized you, what hurt you, what upset you. Like, still kind of living in that past of, like, what happened. And not seeing things as separate events, uh, separate separate things that have happened, and 
taking things for face value instead of for the assumptions that you have from the past. Um, I hope that makes sense. So yeah, there's a lot with bring, being brought up about the past, which is definitely um, strong Cancerian energy. So, uh, okay, group three, that is your reading. Um, let me know what you think, what came up for you in the comment section down below like, share, and subscribe for more, and thank you for stopping by.